Hello and welcome to Z. Since Einstein envisioned them in his theory of general relativity, black holes have been the holy grail of cosmology. As it turned out, thanks to Dr. Stephen Hawking, we now know that they not only exist, but are so enigmatic and powerful that they defy physics rules and challenge the theory of general relativity as well. They have challenged the most creative minds of humanity over the years, and their inexplicable existence continues to do so. Even Stephen Hawking was mistaken about them on multiple occasions. What causes them to move? Are they ageless beings who will exist beyond the end of time? And what exactly would kill you if you fell into one? To discover out, keep watching this video till the conclusion. Stephen Hawking was a scientist. False, black holes have a lifespan. Stephen Hawking is likely the most well-known name in cosmology after Einstein. His contributions revolutionized what we know about the cosmos and helped us move closer to the largest riddle in cosmology, black holes. However, becoming a great scientist entails not just always being correct, but also identifying and rectifying your mistakes along the way. Stephen Hawking was instrumental in the discovery of black holes, yet even he made mistakes about them from time to time. You can't blame him, black holes are such an abnormality that they contradict every physics rule, therefore you can't hit the target with every calculation about them, and there will be some wild swings here and there. Dr. Hawking has claimed since the 1970s that black holes are super concentrations of gravity formed by burned out stars. According to him, these space monsters consume matter and energy only to resurface as an indistinguishable flash of flame. However, during the 17th International Conference on General Relativity and Gravitation in Dublin in 2004, Dr. Hawking conceded that he was mistaken. Since Hawking observed black holes radiating thermally in 1974, a key concern in theoretical physics has been, is information lost in black hole evaporation? According to Hawking, it was eventually solved in 2004. He corrected himself, explaining that his recent discovery has led him to believe that information about materials swallowed up by a black hole isn't truly lost after all. Stephen Hawking discovered that quantum physics cause a black hole to radiate at a constant rate. That means, contrary to popular belief, a black hole is not a cosmic god who lives forever, as the classic black hole hypothesis stated. Instead, a black hole eventually disintegrates and spews out warped matter and energy. Not all black holes are black. If you describe a black hole to someone who has never heard of one before, he might visualize it as a massive black orb of everlasting vacuum in space, engulfing everything in its path. Or they can envision it as a real black hole, like the ones in the Looney Tunes cartoon. However, not all black holes are spheres of darkness in space. Because light can still be emitted from beyond the event horizon. In fact, some black holes are the brightest and shiniest known objects in the cosmos. Quasars are astronomical objects. If you're not sure what a quasar is, here's a quick rundown. A quasar is essentially a supermassive black hole at the center of a distant galaxy that feeds on a vast amount of gas. Quasars are thus distinct from black holes, which are typically formed by the collision of two galaxies, gorging on the inflowing material in the gaseous form. As the gas spirals around it and falls in, it heats up, causing it to produce radiation over the electromagnetic spectrum. This radiation is extremely bright, and the entire galaxy lights up like a stadium holding the Super Bowl, except millions of millions of times brighter, making the black hole appear to be not black. Another reason a black hole may not appear black is coincidental.
it could be due to the way it distorts time. This is more of a perceptual trick, but the massive gravity of a black hole can make everything approaching it appear immobile from afar. For example, a spaceship en route to a black hole may look to a third party to be stationary, yet never reaching the black hole. Similarly, a light source that has been sucked by a black hole may appear to hang in the space between the viewer and the black hole indefinitely. This dazzling object would gradually turn redder and redder, then fainter and fainter until it vanished. Astronomers refer to this phenomenon as red shifting. No, black holes are not a type of hole. As previously discussed, black holes aren't literally holes or portals in the space-time continuum as depicted in Looney Tunes. It is, instead, a zone of space where time and space become extremely strange and inexplicable. We still don't know what's beyond the event horizon, and there's no practical way to find out for the time being. Nonetheless, some scientists believe that certain black holes, also known as wormholes, can serve as gateways to other parts of the universe. Black holes are not the vacuum cleaner of the universe. On the surface, black holes appear to be cosmic vacuum cleaners. They are so powerful because of their singularity, a ball of nothing but highly crushing gravity, that it alters space and time around them. However, this does not imply that they suck everything up like a huge vacuum cleaner. Black holes, while extreme in many aspects, do not have limitless mass. Any is, despite their massive gravity, their force is still determined by the quantity of mass that specific black hole contains. Stellar black holes, for example, have only a very big star's mass. So, just as an object can peacefully orbit around a large star without being drawn to its center, the same objects can contentedly revolve around a stellar black hole indefinitely. However, we would still caution against getting too close to a black hole. The rest of the narrative would be totally different. They enjoy moving it, moving it. When black holes were originally found, they were thought to be a kind of fixed point in space-time destined to drag all neighboring matter and energy to their eventual demise. However, as we have observed, they do not always suck everything, and they also do not like to remain motionless. Black holes, like galaxies, stars, planets, and everything else in the universe, enjoy traveling across the universe. This is exactly why two black holes would collide or merge. To be honest, we found out about their mobility since the first gravitational wave identified in 2015 was the outcome of a collision between two black holes that eventually merged. Not all stars turn into black holes. Many people assume that all stars died as black holes, but scientists established long ago that this is not the case. Stellar black holes are generated when large stars run out of fuel and collapse in on themselves, resulting in a cataclysmic implosion, however this is not the fate of every star. Our sun, or any other star of comparable size, would most certainly finish up as a white dwarf. Even more massive stars are not guaranteed to become black holes, if the center of the star manages to withstand gravitational collapse, it becomes a neutron star instead. A star is thought to have to be at least 20 times the mass of the sun before it can be considered a stellar black hole. Also, we're not sure where supermassive black holes come from, they might or could not be produced by stars. Spaghettification is not practiced at event horizon. Because the gravity of a black hole is so strong that it distorts time, any item falling into it would appear spaghettified from a safe distance. Spaghettification is the process of amplification that causes an object to be pulled apart into a string of individual atoms. Researchers believe that spaghettification always occurs at the black hole's event horizon. That, however, is not the case. Though spaghettification is a true phenomenon associated to black holes, exactly where it happens can vary from black hole to black hole depending on its size. In the case of supermassive black holes, for example, it would happen much later after passing the event horizon. 
It is possible to see black holes though it is true that once light has reached the event horizon, it is no longer possible for it to escape due to the near infinite intensity of gravity inside. This does not make a black hole invisible. We can still observe black holes by watching how stars travel around them. This is how I discovered Sagittarius A asterisk for the first time. Indeed, we can now photograph these suckers, pun intended. E. Display a photograph of Sagittarius A asterisk, C. Telescopes can also detect black holes by seeing the huge accretion disk of stars, gas, and other objects spiraling towards the center, as they did with the M87 supermassive black hole. As it spirals at light speeds, the material in the accretion disk is heated by friction and emits electromagnetic radiation. You will not perish as a result of being crushed in a black hole. Though it is true that no one could survive the great crushing gravity of a black hole, this will not be the cause of your death if you ever fall into one. In fact, it is the spaghettification that will dissolve you before gravity can squeeze your insides out. In the previous video, we explored what spaghettification is. As you might expect, the process of being amplified would rip you apart into molecules before you could get close enough to the black hole to be crushed by its massive gravity and it will happen long before you feel the entire cosmos crushing you in your final moments. The Hadron Collider did not produce black holes. Since the conception of the Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest particle accelerator, there have been rumors and fears among the general public and some members of the scientific community that the particle accelerator would be powerful enough to create tiny black holes that would eventually destroy us all. However, the LHC scientists who were credited with demonstrating the existence of the Higgs boson particle effectively demonstrated that this was not the case. The particle collisions that occur at the LHC are no different than the collisions that occur all the time in nature on our very own planet. The LHC only causes them to occur in isolation so that physicists can witness and analyze them. In fact, even if we could harness all of the mass in our solar system, it would be insufficient to generate a stellar black hole. Some people were concerned that the LHC would create small black holes, but even cosmologists aren't sure if they exist. So, do you believe that microscopic black holes exist in the universe? Did we overlook any theories in this list? Tell us in the comments section. This is all for now. Thank you for being with us.